This is Five on Your Side at Five, focused on you. In the last few hours, former President Donald Trump announced his running mate and officially won the GOP nomination for president. It comes less than 48 hours after he survived an assassination attempt. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Kelly Jackson. And I'm Mike Bush. The former president picked Ohio Senator J.D. Vance as his running mate. And soon after, Mr. Trump officially won the GOP nomination at the Republican National Convention. That assassination attempt was caught on camera during a rally Saturday in Butler, Pennsylvania. One spectator was killed, two others seriously hurt. The former president grazed in the air by a bullet. The shooter fired from the rooftop of a nearby building before he was killed by the Secret Service. The shooter has been identified as Thomas Matthew Crooks, the FBI now looking into his motive. We have team coverage tonight, including more reaction to the attempted assassination from Missouri Republicans. First, our political editor, Mark Maxwell, is live in Milwaukee, where the Republican National Convention is happening. Mark? Kelly and Mike, good evening. A significant security presence surrounds the heart of downtown Milwaukee tonight. Secret Service agents uh, sweep every car that enters the outer perimeter and scan and scour every bag and container that enters this uh, inner perimeter. That's before you even get into the Fiserv Forum where the RNC, the convention just kicked off moments ago here in downtown. Let's take you inside for a quick look at the convention floor where day one of the RNC just kicked off a few hours ago. The floor packed with delegates from each state all amid the backdrop of some significant events in recent days. Remember, former President Donald Trump was scheduled to face sentencing just last Thursday. That has been postponed. Then this morning, Florida Judge Eileen Cannon tossing his felony indictment in that stolen classified documents case. That's to say nothing of Trump coming within an inch of an assassin's bullet and escaping with his life. Then, just hours ago, President Trump announcing his pick for Vice President Senator J.D. Vance of Ohio. All of that leading up to the moment when delegates from each state would formally cast their votes to back Trump to become the GOP nominee. We saw uh, Missouri cast their 54 delegates moments ago. And Illinois Congresswoman Mary Miller from Southern Illinois stepped to the mic moments later to announce Illinois Republicans' 64 delegates backing Trump as well. Illinois Governor Jamie Pritzker was initially slated to be here as a surrogate for Joe Biden's campaign to go on offense and punch back at the Trump campaign to paint him as a danger to democracy. Those plans now on hold as Democrats reassess the situation in the aftermath of that assassination attempt. As one political writer put it, Democrats are, quote, sleepwalking into Armageddon as top party leaders remain deeply divided over whether or not President Biden should even be at the top of the ticket. Mark, uh, you mentioned security. I know you've been to these events before. What have you seen so far in your brief time in Milwaukee compared to other events you've attended like this? There's nothing else quite like this. There are uh, police officers, local officers, making big patrols across the city on bike brigades, both motorcycles and bicycles. There are helicopters from the U.S. Coast Guard flying overhead. No doubt other surveillance uh, and just a very strong police presence everywhere you go around here. That's to say nothing of the concrete barriers that surround every inch of the perimeter uh, really for miles around. You just can't get inside or close to this without going through several security checkpoints. So tonight, Milwaukee may very well be the safest city in America. Thanks, Mark. And Mark will be live at the RNC all week. He will also be at the Democratic National Convention in Chicago starting August 19th. You can catch his reports on air on KSDK.com and the 5 Plus app. Right now, two of the three Republican candidates for Missouri governor are at the RNC as delegates. And just hours before heading to Milwaukee, one of those candidates, Bill Igel, held a prayer rally in St. Charles. Our Justina Cornell joins us in studio after attending today's event. Justina? Well, it was a packed room at the Soda Museum on Main Street, and Senator Bill Igel, who's running for governor, focused on prayer. Now, today, the crowd thanked God for Donald Trump's safety and prayed for the nation to come together. Igel addressed the room, calling former President Trump 
one of the nation's greatest patriots. He said he'd be nominating Trump as the next president of the United States. Following the shooting on Saturday, President Joe Biden's campaign pulled down their TV ads. But right now, Igel's political ads are still rolling. Some show him using a flamethrower and a gun. Now, we asked Igel if he plans to keep those ads, and he says they'll continue to run. I also spoke to Five on Your Side political analyst Anita Mannion on her perspective. We're also going to be we're going to continue to be bold about uh, doing the things that we need to do to protect our communities and unite this state. I suspect that Eigel and others will probably leave those up. They want to continue to paint themselves as strong proponents of the Second Amendment and as fighters. We've also reached out to the other two Republican candidates running for governor. Jay, Ash Jay Ashcroft said he was at an event on Saturday when he stopped it to gather in prayer for Trump and the nation. And Mike Kehoe said it's more important now than ever to come together as Americans. You can watch more coverage of the Republican National Convention on NBC Nightly News. That's right after this newscast. And also tonight, Lester Holt sits down with President Joe Biden for the first time since the assassination attempt on former President Trump. You can watch a preview of that one-on-one -on -one interview on NBC Nightly News and then catch the full unedited interview in a primetime special beginning at 8. Now, our forecast. We have a weather impact alert. Right now, we are dealing with dangerous heat and humidity with heat and disease and the triple digits. Let's check in with meteorologist Jim Castillo. Hey, Jim. Hi, Kelly. So today was the second hottest day this summer. The last one was your birthday on the 25th of June when it was 103. Today we did not hit 100, but we did get to 98. Again, uh, feels like temperature at about 106. And what we're seeing temperature wise is that all of us below that 100 degree mark, and it looks like a low and mid 90s right now, even Berkeley coming in at about 98. But that real field temperature, well over 100. In fact, some spots even higher than 110. So until 8 o'clock, that dangerous heat continues with that high humidity, high dew points and heat affects everyone without effective cooling. So hydrate, use your AC or find it. Uh, it will cool off a little bit tonight, but probably not by much about 80 and the city by morning. But we are watching showers and storms, severe weather up to the north. Eventually, you know, some of that might actually try to make it into the area, but the bullseye for severe weather tonight, even the risk of tornadoes around Chicago for us in a weakened state as that pushes south. There is a chance of some late evening storms. I'll have more on that coming up in just a few minutes. All right, Jim, and you can find a list of cooling centers in the St. Louis area on KSDK.com. For a link, just text the word HEAT to 314-425-5355. Still ahead, a legal win for former President Trump. Why a judge is dropping the classified documents case against him. Plus, new video showing the moments of a shooting inside a North St. Louis County church. Preparing plates for animals at the zoo. A behind-the-scenes look at what it takes to put together their diets. 